Hello everyone. My name is Michael Horwitz and I'm Coder Z's Marketing Programs Manager here at Intellitech and I'm super glad to welcome you to our webinar is Blockly the next big thing next big thing for robotics education. For those of you who are not familiar with us, Intellitech has been a pioneer of robotics and education for over 30 years. Our latest innovation, Coder Z, is an online learning environment compatible with the Lego Mindstorms EV3 that gives students worldwide the opportunity to program virtual robots using 3D engaging simulations while meeting key STEM curriculum goals. CoderZ makes robotics for education accessible, affordable, and enjoyable for all. If you want to learn more about STEM, coding, and robotics, curriculums, and solutions, reach out to us. We will be happy to schedule a call with you. In the meantime, you can read more about the CoderZ online learning environment by visiting gocoderz.com or by following Coder Z on Facebook and Twitter. A few technical details before we begin. I encourage all participants to submit questions throughout the event. To submit a question, simply type it into the questions box in the lower corner of the GoToWebinar control panel. For the Twitter fans in the audience, we encourage you to use the hashtag Steminar to discuss the webinar as it is happening. If you want to ask the Coder Z team a question on Twitter, please do so by mentioning us by typing at GoCoderZ. Now, I'm very proud to introduce our speaker. Ken Gracie is the CEO of Parallax and founder of their educational initiatives. Ken is a graduate of UC Davis and also a career technology education instructor in California. He's an enthusiastic educator with a true personal interest in ensuring the success of STEM educational experiences. Ken, the audience is all yours. Thank you, Michael. Hello, everybody. Hey, if you're waving back, I can't see you. Michael mentioned there's an easy way to communicate with us. Um, you can ask questions or use the chat, so make yourself at home. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the webinar. Thank you, IntelliTech, for inviting me to do this. Um, it's wonderful to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is Blockly. Um, I've become a Blockly fanatic about several years ago, and um, it's kept me busy ever since. So in this webinar, I'd like to answer the question, is Blockly the next big thing for robotics education? We're going to run through this kind of quickly. We're going to look at how Blockly is different, how it works, what students learn from it, what the university research is, and uh, where Blockly is going, and then how you can get started with Blockly. Sound good? OK. A little bit about myself. Um, so I work for Parallax in Rockland, California. We have a staff of 30, and our company is all about putting microcontrollers into education. So we make robots for schools. And I've been doing this for 20 years. I'm also a career technology education California credential teacher. And uh, the school district I've partnered with is North Lake Tahoe High School and North Tahoe School. It's a combination middle and high school that has 600 students. Um, shown in this picture is my middle school class. And I've worked in here for about seven years, and uh, they're programming in Blockly and loving it. The teacher didn't know anything about this, but picked it up and ran with it. And then they move on to high school, and they're in a up to a three-year program. It's an engineering technology program, a makerspace. They have CNC machines, 3D printers, um, routers, and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So um, they learn programming, drawing, everything you'd expect in an engineering technology class. I also like to teach teachers. I run professional development courses, and we have done these um, pretty much all around the world. I've done at least maybe 100 of them in my span at Parallax, um, everywhere from Asia and Taiwan, throughout Europe, California, Colorado, Texas, Florida, all over the place. This particular photo happens to be from Iowa just last fall. So while we get going here, um, I'll have you store this photo in your, in your brain. Um, this is a person named Bob McCamish who works for the city of Roseville. We're calling him now internally Blockly Bob. And Bob has never programmed before, but um, when it came time for the Earth Day Festival, working in the traffic division, he grabbed a stoplight. And if you look closely, you'll see he's programming it in Blockly, and he's got a microcontroller on the desk. So he'd never programmed before, and he tells us he would not have been able to program if we're not for Blockly. Of course, the city traffic 
network does not run from Blockly. But it makes the point that Blockly is a really powerful and inclusive learning tool. So why coding? Well, we all know. Um, basically, we need to become a society of creators and not consumers anymore. Coding is everywhere. Not always is actual code, but in terms of computational thinking, um, we see it throughout our office and spreadsheets and databases outside. We're seeing self-driving cars, private rocket programs um, that are, are making all the news every day. Artificial intelligence, uh, which has proven to work better in some cases in law, seismic testing, as salespeople, and of course, car drivers. So coding is all around us. In our office, for example, where we have 30 people, um, pretty much everyone knows enough about what we do um, that they can talk about it and even write some code. So computational thinking is everywhere. And uh, the job data is showing it um, right now. There are the job growth, for coders is 12% higher than the overall job market. In California, um, coding jobs pay $22,000 more than other professional jobs. And interestingly, nine out of 10 high schools don't offer programming coursework in the USA. So I can understand that learning to code is its own career. So let's be realistic about that. Um, it's difficult to become a coding teacher, but Blockly opens the door for that. So Blockly is a visual programming language. Um, these are also called drag and drop icon based programming environments and they're, they're also called icon or form based programs and they allow you to create a program graphically by drawing things around on the screen, filling in number boxes and then running the program. Um, so the open source popularity of these languages has increased in recent years and now Blockly is being adapted for all kinds of use. So uh, these are not to be confused with um, other visual languages like Visual Basic and Visual C. So where did all this start? Well, believe it or not, it started 50 years ago. Has anybody seen this before? So this is Logo, and this was the original creation of uh, Seymour Papert and a few colleagues, and this came about in 1967. This is probably the original, uh, most well-known graphical and text-based programming system. Um, in which you type commands and then you press enter and you move the turtle and the turtle is represented by that little triangle cursor. Pretty impressive, huh? Scratch. Scratch is undoubtedly the most popular visual programming language. Um, I think we're all aware of it. It's being used extensively in elementary school. It was developed by the MIT Media Lab Lifelong Kindergarten Group. And the first release was in 2002, but the official release was 2005. Scratching, the term scratching means to reuse and adapt code in computer science. And that's a key feature of Scratch. You could download and build upon others' programs. Scratch is primarily used for storytelling, games, animations, mostly screen programming. Okay, so it's in the same category as Blockly. Blockly came from Google. And uh, Blockly started in the summer of 2011, and the first release was in San Mateo, California at the Maker Fair in May 2012. So this is actually a new language, and Google's Neil Fraser started the project. So how do they compare? They're both very popular systems, and each one is very good for their intended use. So how are they different? Well, of course, Scratch was developed by MIT, Blockly was developed by Google. As we'll see later, they've actually combined. So Scratch is primarily for games, animation, screen programming. Blockly, on the other hand, is a development tool in itself. So it's really a runtime engine. Um, people might call it an application program interface. So when you're programming in Blockly, you're really programming in a, in a system that companies like Coder Z, IntelliTech, and Parallax have adapted for their own uses. Scratch. So, um, as you see, when you go to each website, the purpose is really clear. Scratch's website is targeted for students. This is a fun place. Jump in um, and start, start programming. So, kids who are just old enough to uh, type and read can pretty much use this tool. The Blockly website looks a little different. Um, it's for developers. So companies like Parallax and IntelliTech can grab the Blockly system 
and then we can mix it up for our own use. So Blackly is for developers itself. Blackly apps are for students. However, even though we're showing Blackly for robotics here, um, you can't get far with this without students saying, what's this Blackly stuff all about? I want to program Blackly, which is also something they can do. Using the Black Factory, you can actually create and configure blocks, and this will write the JavaScript for you, which you can copy on your computer and run from a web page. Okay, so um, count on this as part of your fun when you get into Blockly. And uh, it's called Google's Block Factory. And the best tutorials that I like on YouTube are from Ruth Leopold. And just simply search for Blockly Tutorials Part 1 and 2. So the webinar is hosted by um, IntelliTech, who makes Coder Z. And of course, Parallax, who makes um, the Activity Bot and Blockly Prop. Coder Z strengths are in programming tutorials, virtual robots, um, also, also with support for real robots. So any Coder Z code you create, um, you can put in Java and download to the robot with a tool called um, Lejos. And then the Parallax system is focused on electronics, robots, microcontrollers, sensors, and inventions. And you build and wire our robots, and then you program them in Blockly or C. So our focus is entirely on physical robots. Now this is interesting. How popular are visual programming languages? So it's actually difficult to look at Blockly on its own because Blockly, as I mentioned, is a development tool. But Scratch this year has scratched its way into the top 20 quite clearly. Now who tracks languages? It's this group called Tiobe, and they're in the Netherlands. And uh, Tiobe tracks the new program starts or, or new code that's created by different language. So I asked them, what about Blockly? And they replied back very appropriately, well, Blockly is not a programming language. That's right, Blockly creates all kinds of code. Um, Python, Java, C, basic, whatever you want to do, your blocks can create it, okay, which is tremendously flexible. So Blockly, we, I think we could look at Scratch as an indicator of where block programming is going. So Tiobe this year has plopped Scratch into the top 20 um, based on new programs. It was 22 last year. So the top 20 is an ambitious place. You'll see all these industry languages here. Now this is their, their change in new program starts. Just check out this curve. What this says to me is the teachers out there are doing an awesome job. So it's fairly flat till 2014, 2015. And now we see this tremendous uptick in new program creation with Scratch. I mean, it's just taking off. So I, I really wonder what this curve is going to look like later. But what's wonderful is all these elementary kids that are programming Scratch, they're also going to encounter Blockly when they get bigger. And then they can use robots in your classes, depending on which grade you're in. So there's a whole continuum here of programming that can be done in block programming. What about other languages? So they're doing this. Um, because of library creation that already exists, sometimes you will not see the true use of the language tracked in TO, but it appears at Java and C are a little bit on the decline. But others are quite stable. So what is it about Blockly? You know, why, why is it so relevant? What makes it so useful? It's these two things. It boils down to this. First, it speeds the understanding of logic and it eliminates the frustration of syntax errors. These are the two things that grab early programmers. Let's get a look using Coder Z to see how it speeds the syntax learning. So this is the Coder Z environment. Um, you can log in here for free in a 14-day trial. I, I very quickly did this and um, grabbed a Lego EV3 robot, made some blocks, put an ultrasonic sensor on it, had it drive towards the wall, and then when it encountered the wall, it would turn right. And I did that 10 times. It was really fast. Now, you can click on the code tab, and then you can see the Java equivalent. So there's your Java. And you can write these new programs in Java or in Blockly. So this is a feature of all Blockly systems. Um, they all have the ability to click on code. And then you can see um, either blocks or code view. So this is Parallax's Blockly prop. And this is actually um, a code for programming the activity bot to roam around, 
make a sound um, and use its ultrasonic sensor. As you can see in this code, um, when the distance is less than eight inches, uh, then it will turn right. Um, otherwise, it will just go straight. And then there's a little sound, which is over here in this function. And the code view of that looks like this. So of course, we've got to look at the robot. So I will just switch my computer over to the robot. Right here, I have some other goodies to show you. First, we'll run this. Well, how'd you like that? <laughs> it's pretty neat, isn't it? So that's a real robot and actually performed almost identically to the uh, virtual robot that I coded in Coder Z. Blockly is considered a bridge from visual programming to text coding. And to demonstrate this, um, you know, I'll just use the three students I hear, had here last summer, starting out with Blake. Um, these were three eighth graders and they had met me in their class and towards the end of the semester they came to me and said, we want to work for you this summer. And I would say, oh, the office environment's really boring. We have a lot of important work to do and uh, you guys don't want to do that. You know, go do something fun for the summer. But they came back and back. So I hired them and I got Blake, Roxy, and Carson and they're pretty much average kids, um, no prior experience. And their job was to help us develop our Blockly system. So they would be running the blocks, looking at the C code it generated, and then reporting back to our Blockly developers via GitHub what they learned. So this was pretty exciting. Um, they came in here knowing nothing, but Blake very quickly um, cobbled together this project, which is his um, ultrasonic sensor garage parking assistant. And it just shows you the distance to the car. By the end of summer, he was programming in C. Pretty light C, but he was doing it and it was an amazing job. And he, he learned very quickly. So here's the uh, Blockly code and then a C code for his garage parking assistant. Then we had Roxy. So Roxy, um, also a pretty typical kid, she built an m, &M candy color sorter and that project's on the Parallax website. It's actually right here. And of course, we've improved it a little bit, but it still is made out of cardboard, so it's nothing that fancy, using a color sensor and then some little cups and a few servo motors. So last fall, um, after they had been in, in my uh, office for the summer, I went to their class, and uh, they had been programming robots in C for the first three weeks. And I was bringing in Blockly to demonstrate how it had progressed, and I showed them, and. Um, Roxy, who is particularly vocal all the time, stood up and said, Mr. Smith, to the teacher, why haven't you given us Blockly? That's what we wanted. You started us in C, and you didn't give us any instruction. We wanted the Blockly stuff. So it's very typical response of kids. It's a great place to start. The other student we have was Carson, and uh, Carson spent his summer also doing the same thing, learning C um, using Blockly. And his focus was on this device, which is an OLED display. So he's actually off to college now as a chemical engineer. So the high school kids have very positive feelings about Blockly. Let's take a look at that in more detail. As I mentioned, I've taught classes in programming for 20 years, and um, this is the first year I really got to use Blockly, and the reception was totally different. And really, here's why. Neil Frazier, um, the developer of Blockly from Google, pointed this out. He said that we have about 20 seconds to engage them before they get bored and wander off to play video games. Every barrier to entry, installing the tools, slow download, languages, a messy user interface represents a loss of the audience. And I've seen this. If you're going to spend half of an hour getting the tools running, the students are gone. Okay. So this is a totally different batch. Students now are the first generation raised entirely on the internet. Okay, they may not even use Microsoft. They, they don't call, they text. Google's a research tool. They're used to collaborating. Everything lives in the cloud. So they expect results fast and Blockly can help give, them to them, give that to them. 
Here's a graphic that kind of summarizes it. This is what I've observed. So traditional programming, there are issues with typing, but with blocks, it's very quick. They can drag them or their program doesn't work, but with blocks, they figure it out pretty much on their own, which is so much easier for a teacher. Or they're not interested with code, but with blocks are like, hmm, this is sort of fun. And then things that were hard to code are actually easy and they can get through the project. Less frustration, less frustration, more progress. So how about the research? Let's get a quick look at this. There are a whole bunch of studies on Blockly. Most of them come from Northwestern University or New York University. Um, I'm actually featured in one of them here. And uh, what they point out generally is that block-based programming creates a different feeling in the classroom. It's a positive, fun environment. The students are interacting more. They're more prone to talk to their neighbors, but they're talking about what they're doing. And then the teachers spend less time standing in front of the class and more time assisting them one-on-one. -on -one. From a data perspective, Northwestern University found this. So they looked at five different aspects of programming, comprehension, logic, procedures, iterative logic, and variables. And then they taught them in Java and in Blockly. And this is what they found. They found a significantly better performance on their understanding of logic, procedures, and iterative logic with block-based programming tools. Here's another interesting metric from a different study. This study compares the size of the program they create versus time. And then the size of the dot represents the number of times they downloaded it. So what happened with the two students on the left is they charged out and they started creating programs quickly. They were building code, building blocks. Then they started to run it. Then they found out it didn't work, quite work the way they thought it would. So they probably removed blocks. Then they started running it again. But the student on the far right took a more consistent approach. It looks like out of block, run, out of block, run. So what are the criticisms? Well, there are a few. We won't even spend much time on them. They're so small. <laughs> um, first, there's a perceived lack of application beyond the classroom. Some students may say, well, who got a job programming in Blackly? Or are these blocks authentic? Okay, it's typical of high school kids, not at lower levels. The second issue is that the perception of blocks is that they're less powerful than the code they create. Can blocks generate real code? Then the third issue, which is really an opportunity, is that Blockly flips a class. So students start working on, the own, on their own, and then the teacher has to adjust their style to that. Rather than talking, they're assisting them one-on-one. -on -one. Let's talk about the authenticity first. So the idea that blocks are somehow not as powerful as the code. This assumption is not correct. So it can be difficult to create blocks that fully mimic a full C or Java code library. What you're looking at here is the JavaScript that generates C code in our Blockly prop system. And this particular code is for turning an IO pin high or low, blinking it, blinking an LED basically. Everything you see in blue is the C code. So provided this block is coded properly in JavaScript, it creates 100% reliable code. But can real things also be accomplished in Blockly? Take a look at this. So you saw Bob's traffic signal in the beginning. Here's another interesting project. This is a drone down indicator coded in Blockly prop. So drones fly with lithium ion batteries. When they crash, batteries can fail. Drones can lose their connection to the ground station. You don't know where your drone is. So this could be a problem for the drone owner and for the FAA. You do not want to be the owner of a loose drone. So here's a system um, with a separate microcontroller and separate power supply that continuously transmits the location of your drone back to a ground station. So you see on the left, that's an OLED display that has your latitude and longitude, your heading, your elevation, and how many satellites there are. So you can go out and find your drone. And that's all wireless. And here's the code that runs that. So it's quite simple. So the third criticism was the shifting roles of the teacher. And this is really a big opportunity. In other words, teachers who've taught coding can adapt to a new way of doing things. And it's actually easier. Students don't really want a lot of instruction. They just want to start working. So this picture is um, one of my favorite professors, Jordan Meyer from American River College. And in the past, he's taught all, all forms of programming. 
And uh, this year he started out with Blockly. And he pointed out that Blockly really changed the environment in his class. The students are diving right in, and he's roaming the class dealing with their, their whole project and Blockly problems, which is so much easier than trying to debug where the braces are, the curly braces. So, and this becomes particularly important when you have real physical robots because you add in electronic circuitry, power supplies, and a student that raises their hand and says it doesn't work, you know, could represent an hour of work. <laughs> so you have to teach them how to, how to learn on their own, and Blockly helps that. And by the way, here's his class. So uh, their competition is tomorrow. They build sumo bots. They, they added their own physical scoops or whatever. Um, and they'll have a ring and um, they'll compete. And it looks like it went very well. So in a classroom, as a teacher, Blockly supports differentiation quite well. Um, you can have some students in Blockly and then some in code and separate them that way, but keeping them all on the same hardware or on the same robot, whether it's a virtual robot or a real one. Here's some feedback I received yesterday, and this is from a middle school that's using the Scribbler 3 robot. And um, the sponsoring teacher, who's actually a volunteer, says, after 10 hours of watching the kids with Blockly, I see they need very little instruction. I give them to the tutorials, review the big goals, and cut them loose to figure things out on their own. That would never happen with this age group and a lower level language. It's incredible. That's from Rich Levergood. So, yeah, and with Coder Z, it's even easier because it's all virtual and the tutorials are online. What I love about Blockly the most is it's totally inclusive. Sure, it was created for students, but I want to show you some other people that have jumped in using Blockly. Okay, so we have our kids for sure. Here's a set of third graders programming robots. Their robots, by the way, are on display in a library right now with the artwork. But this is when it gets interesting. Here's one of our big fans and big users. This is Carol Hazlitt. And she works night and day with Blockly. She writes for Nuts and Volts magazine, and she worked at Mind's Eye Robotics. She teaches programming with Seattle Robotics Society and has published a number of articles. Google her. She's got a number of videos on YouTube. She's very active on our Blockly for Microcontrollers Facebook group. Just take a look at her desk. Is this not a friend you'd like to have? Those dinosaurs are eating Lego robots on one side. On the other side, she's got a whole bunch of mechanical robots. So Blockly's inclusive, and Carol, since she got into this, has posted 20 plus projects, and she's part of our development team too. Here's another interesting one. This is actually my dad. This is Chuck Gracie. So Chuck is 80 years old, and he refuses to stop learning, and here he is using Blockly to solve four equations with four unknowns. And this is part of the um, part of a heat transfer comp, uh, computation that he likes to solve, but he's doing it in Blockly on a microcontroller. And I could not have imagined him as being as interested in this if he had to code in any other language. So he just jumped right on it. So Blockly, uh, as I mentioned, will be with students either at Scratch or other block programming tools from the time they're very young. Um, and the upper limit we've not quite seen yet to what Blockly can do because it's only been released in 2012 and how useful it is depends on how well it's coded. So I think it can be used from everything from screen games to CNC machines. You might be familiar with MIT's App Inventor where you could write um, apps in Blockly on your computer, then test them, then download them. Maybe you've seen Made with Code. This website is exclusively focused on um, showing coding projects to teenage girls. It's totally awesome. This is the Parallax Multicore Microcontroller, and it's an embedded processor with eight cores. It's connected to a variety of things here. This is a tilt tone project with an, uh, a two-axis tilt sensor and a, and a speaker, potentiometer, and then an, oh, an LED, which shows you the program number it's running. Here's an automatic plant watering system, and the display shows the location uh, on X and Y incline of an accelerometer. But we're now starting to see Blockly move into things like this. These are UC Merced students, and drones. 
at a high level could be flown with black light. How about this? CNC machines. Why not? So where is Blackly going? This is one way to find out, is talk to the developers. This is Neil Frazier, and he has an interesting video on YouTube. And he points out that Google will enhance Blackly environment, adding features for real-time collaboration, Google Maps style zooming, and keyboard shortcuts. So these are all user interface things, and they're very relevant because our students now who are growing up with um, Google Sheets and Google Docs are totally collaborating and they're working on presentations in groups together. I've seen, I've seen whole documents come together. We do it professionally. And so their code should be also in the cloud working the same way. So he's referring to um, cooperative code development. And his second point here says that Google has open sourced it and developers have taken it over, which is definitely what IntelliTech and Parallax have done. And he points out, interestingly, it'll take 20 years before anybody benefits from this. Well, I think it's happening a lot faster than Neil expected, so it's pretty exciting. Now, where is it officially going? Um, you'll find this on the Google Developers website. Scratch Blocks is their combination effort. MIT and Google have combined and they're taking the best of each tool and then putting it together. The focus tends to be on younger audiences, horizontal block systems, um, and more focus on tablets. So probably not appropriate for a robot programming, but very good for the intended use. So how do you get started? Um, CoderZ makes it very easy. You don't even need any robots. It's all virtual. So teachers can get a free 14-day trial with additional seats for students. And IntelliTech offers personalized support. The system's super easy to use. The tutorials are also easy to follow. They look like this. So in each tutorial, tutorial, it will give you a challenge, and then they'll build the code. And then you will put it into a robot and run it. So this particular robot has on it a, looks like a color sensor. How do you start with Parallax? So Parallax a Heart is a hardware-based company, and our tool is Blockly Prop. And um, if you're a middle school teacher, you can grab that green S3 robot. Middle school or high school, uh, start with the activity bot. If you're interested in embedded electronics, you can use the flip module. And all the tutorials for these are posted on learn.parallax.com. So Parallax is focused being on embedded processors. Um, we feature both Blockly code and C code. And this example is whiskers on an activity bot coded in Blockly. But side by side, there's a system of tutorials for C. So this will help your students move straight into C. They can program either way. And the code, the code generated by the blocks is very similar to what you'll see in the C code. Are you a social media user? OK, a number of you are. So, Jump into these two groups. Um, IntelliTech runs a wonderful group called Robotics and STEM for All. There's your link. And Parallax has Blockly for microcontrollers. Each group has around 300 members. They're both new and they're growing quickly. If you'd like to connect with me later, um, here's how you can find me. I'm all over the interwebs, but there's my email address and my direct line. And um, if you want to get started in Coder Z, uh, they'll talk briefly about that. So while we end, I will give you one quick demo here. This is a robot that is outfitted with um, a can of hairspray, and it's programmed in Blockly. Let's just see what it does. I have to clear the desk here a little bit. OK, we're going to turn that on, see if it works. <laughs> well, what'd you think of that? You don't want that going off at the wrong time. So I hope I've increased your understanding of Blockly, and um, we can take questions now. I want to thank you all. I especially want to thank IntelliTech for inviting me, and my own team at Parallax has done an awesome job um, creating all the Blockly resources. And uh, just hope you enjoy this as a teacher. It's a lot of fun. So turning this over to Coder Z and then questions. Thank you very much, Ken, for an awesome presentation. 
Uh, we're going to take questions now from the audience. I'm going to start off with a question from one of our participants. How would you recommend advancing from Blockly to text programming? Ah, okay. So um, with Coder Z, as I showed you, you can actually see the two side by side. So you can program the tutorial first in Blockly, and then you can do it in Java. With Parallax, the tutorials on the Learn site are literally almost side by side, um, but in different menus. So you can open up a robot tutorial for blocks, program in blocks, and then go see the C equivalent. And that's your progress. And you can also just switch back and forth as you're developing between the code view and the block view on either tool. Thank you, Jess. That that's a good great. question. Okay. Does anyone else have uh, questions for Ken? Okay, we'll give people a few more minutes to get their question in. Okay, we have a question. They're coming in fast now. Okay. And Blockly, okay. yep, go ahead. Sorry, but I'll let you finish up there. I was just going to say Blockly being a relatively new tool as well, um, this is probably the first exposure for a lot of people on the webinar. Okay, so we have a question from Terry. Will this video meeting be available so I can share with my teachers? Yeah, I can answer that one, Terry. We are going to be posting this recording uh, and we'll be sending out a follow-up email with the link to the recording so that you can both uh, view this at your whatever is convenient for you and share it with others. Uh, we'll also be posting the slides to the presentation and you can get those also. And Terry, if you or any other teachers um, would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with myself or with Coder Z, I think we're both open to that. I can use Google Hangouts and show you anything in detail. Sometimes I do it for a whole class, too. Excellent. Moving on, we have a question from Elizabeth. Have you found educators and students are using Blockly or Scratch more in the elementary level? You know, Scratch in the elementary level, um, it's far more mature. There are more resources for it. Blockly has, though, an, a number of applications you could go straight to from the developer website. So you can look at both, and students will find them pretty much interchangeable. But Scratch has a much larger, there are 22 million programs created for Scratch. It's a good question. So yeah, stick with it. And it, it all connects, as I mentioned, so you can't go wrong with either system. Thanks, Ken. We have a question from Gabriella. What are the main things Blockly provides to a kid logical slash algorithmical thinking? So Blockly will allow them um, to see their, their nested loops, for example, and the role of functions. Um, when you create these in text, of course, you have to have your braces in the right place. But in Blockly, you can literally visualize it and see it and see how they're nested. And then the, the different colors that are used show where the blocks go, show where the functions live and where the um, nested loops live. So this really helps in um, like if, then, else, or with case select, or just different function and expression evaluation type of algorithms when you can actually see them. Yeah, great Excellent. question. Definitely. Um, we have another question from Richard. How can I program my EV3 using Blockly? Oh, okay. So, yeah, good question, um, Richard. If you have an EV3, you could actually just get the trial version of um, IntelliText Coder Z. And in it, um, on their website, you'll find a link to Lejos, which is L E. JOS, and that's a utility that takes the um, Java code from your Coder Z program and then downloads it to your EB3 robot. Fantastic. Yeah, and, and uh, Richard, uh, we've actually got a few knowledge base articles on uh, the, the Go Coder Z uh, knowledge base where we talk about the process of, of uh, installing the ledgers on the EB3 and then downloading that code. So I recommend that you check it out. So we've got another question from uh, one of our audience participants. How different is Scratch from Broccoli? 
meaning when students who already know Scratch need additional training? You know, so um, I would say that what differs, um, initially I would say the colors differ. Um, Blockly you have total control over the colors. So the colors and then the, the syntax actually of the block, like the language using the block would vary between Scratch and Blockly. Um, for each different type of robot system, for example, the way you might control the motors is different. And some you may control speed and some might, others you might have control over distance. So this, this um, changes how the block is actually coded. But uh, you'll find that um, from a student's perspective, they're, they're pretty portable. Um, once they've used one, they can use the other. Fantastic. We got another question from John. Would you recommend Blockly to be introduced without robotics equipment before jumping into work with robots? Yeah, I would. Um, so you can go to JM, you can go to the Google developer site and then see some of the screen based programming tools for Blockly that exist. And there are a bunch out there like PBS has some, um, a, a number of nonprofits have created their own. Code.org is perhaps the biggest user of Blockly. So um, that's used in most of the national computer science curriculums. So if you're at a, a middle school or low, lower level and you go to code.org, I think you're giving your students an advance on what's to come when they're up in high school? Yeah, great question. Yeah, and I would just add to that, that a kind of a nice bridge is the Coder Z environment where you get to program a robot without having to deal with the robotic equipment. So that's a nice way to bridge from the one world to the next. So we've got a question from Eric. What sort of resources are needed to get started Budgetary concerns, as always. Eric, zero. <laughs> it's free. So you need a, um, with Blockly, really, for screen programming, you just need a tablet or a computer. Um, even an iPad will do it. And uh, just go Google for some Blockly sites, and you'll come across a whole bunch of them. There are well over, I mean, maybe that thousands of them. So yeah, no cost to get started. I mean, in fact, you can even do the virtual robots for free. Cool, very cool. Uh, let's see here. We've got a question from Alexander. Have you seen any use of Blockly at a community college level? Yes, Alexander. Um, so it's interesting because Parallax's focus on Blockly is with the embedded processors, the electronic systems that are like this. And um, what we're doing is making this much easier to use in high school and college. So we've, we've taken this fun cartoonish looking language and we've developed it for an embedded processor that has all these cores. And that target audience is high school and college. Um, I did show you one example that was a community college. So absolutely, and I think it's early right now. There's probably a handful, but um, within five years, it's gonna change a whole bunch. Excellent. Uh, from David, how would you propose combining Coder Z slash robotics with a class already progressing through code.org coursework? Well, I think um, don't take it all too seriously because there are, there are a lot of different tools you can use. And um, I think as, as educators, our role sometimes is just to expose them to other ways of doing the same thing. Um, I'm not totally familiar with the code.org curriculum, but I'm sure that uh, you can plug in your own Blockly projects anytime there. Um, you know, robotics moves them from the screen to something physical, so I don't think you'll have any shortage of interest or attention in doing that. But um, yeah, you could use multiple tools together. And I know it's not an, it's an elective class usually, so uh, it's not a hard science. Um, you have You have freedom. Great questions, folks. Keep on coming. We got another one from Harold. Is Blockly a compilable language? So Blockly um, blocks are coded in JavaScript, and the JavaScript code um, creates code that then goes into a compiler. So the Blockly blocks can create Java, Python, C, Basic, whatever you you code into them using JavaScript, and then that code compiles and runs. So um, not directly, but it generates code, which is then compiled. In the case of a microcontroller, it turns into code that the microcontroller can understand and run as machine code. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, so, good question, Harold. 
We've got a question from Anna. What is your experience with Coder Z virtual version to building robots? So the virtual version, um, you have the ability in settings, Anna, to configure the robot, like to put different sensors on different ports, um, the ultrasonic, the touch sensors, etc. So you have some configuration, and then once you've done that, you, you can code around it. So um, it's a system that keeps you from having a lot of failure. Um, it's something you can just, a teacher could just drop into a class and let the class go, is my view with the tutorials. So it's somewhat customizable with virtual robot, but you know there are limitations. You know, physical robots are, are the next step, and of course, you know, there's no limit to how you might wire things on a breadboard. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, I would just mention that uh, since Coder Z is now compatible with the EV3, so that's a pretty seamless transition if the EV3 is configured to match the virtual uh, robot. We've got another question from April. How does Scratch compare to code.org? I'm currently using code with my classes. Well, April, um, so code.org would likely provide a number of introductory programs. And again, I think it's one of those things that um, you don't need to take too seriously. Perhaps it depends on the age group you're teaching. So if you're dealing with uh, first, second, and third graders, um, Scratch would be a good tool. Higher elementary, um, if you use more Blockly, then they can see the code that it generates. So there's no, there's no wrong way to do this. Um, uh, definitely one thing I can tell you is that the capability of students in the last five years has gone up at lower levels. Uh, so yeah, you can you can mix and match, um, but either either is really appropriate. Thanks, Ken. All right, we've got we're going to take our last question now from Miriam. Is Blockly the right way to motivate young students to get into coding or programming? <laughs> Miriam, that's a great that's a, a very relevant question. So. There's all this, I always feel like there's all this pressure on teachers, teach coding, um, but it's such a new thing, you may not know how to do it, you have to have professional development and it feels kind of threatening, so I understand that. Um, what's nice about Blockly and Scratch is it has a very low barrier of entry and anybody can do it. Um, you'll find that in a typical class, especially at higher levels, levels I've worked with, you know, you'll have a quarter of the class that has like real interest in coding, half of them can do it if you're using text coding and then a quarter is not interested, but as you switch into a block-based program, three quarters to seven-eighths of them are actively engaged. So Scratch or Blockly on their own will do that and then all you have to do are find other uses of it online that are interesting to the students. And then eventually, of course, you can combine robots and hardware, but it's all progression. I thought you were going to ask me about that flame-throwing robot. I'm surprised no one's asked you about that. <laughs> I want to know how I can get one for myself. <laughs> well, I do have one other interesting th thing to show you since you took the last question. This is actually a um, serial addressable LED strip controlled by Blockly. Each LED has 21 million colors, or 16 million colors. So yeah, impressive, huh? <laughs> Very cool. I think that was a great question to end off on, but do not worry. Uh, Ken's going to be available on the Facebook group for taking questions, and we will also share his contact information so you can ask him questions following up with this webinar. So I'm going to wrap things up in the interest of time. Thank you very much, and thank you for everybody for your time today. Really great yes. attendance, too. Thank you, Ken, for a great presentation. You're very and thank welcome. you all for attending this webinar. We really hope you enjoyed the session with Ken. We will share the recording of the webinar and the slides on our website at gocoderz.com, and we'll make sure to send the link in a follow-up email to everyone who attended today. If you want to learn more about our STEM coding and robotics curriculums and solutions, reach out to us. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting by clicking on the calendar link we shared in the chat. It's going to be STEMtacular. Once again, thank you for joining us today. Have a great day.